to the show. Um, I'm still having this very interesting conversation with Ashim here, uh, who is making some waves in Nigeria right now. So um, I'm going to ensure that I make the best use of his time as well while he's in Nigeria. Now we're going to talk about Nigeria. Yes. You know. Huh. What has your experience been in Nigeria? Ooh. It's almost hard to put into words because, um, well, I haven't been there for that many days in total, but uh, every day has been overwhelming, overwhelming by mm. fantastic impressions by the great human beings, which I have been uh, honored to work with, but also mm -hmm. just meet in general. My impression with Nigeria is that there is a kind of um, hunger to create which right. and make make things happening right. which um, which is uh, not in the same way as in Europe where the things is a little more slow but uh, people are uh, want to create something and uh, want to do it fast and uh, want mm. to do it uh, high quality and uh, and uh, this kind of uh, vitality, uh, you, you can hear it in the theater field, you can hear it in the music, music. you can hear that um, that uh, this is almost ent entrepreneurs uh, in, um, in art. Uh, and I'm not talking uh, uh, only yeah. music business sense that people are very eager to promote their music and yeah. does it well, but uh, they want to do new things. And, um, mm. I think the same way that Afrobeats has now exploded around the world yeah. and uh, the same way that uh, you know each country has its cycles uh, when right. it's like right. globally like right. Fela Kuti, yeah. the 70s and 80s yeah. and I think now Afro jazz Afro. will be the new thing mm. actually. Really? Yes, I think so okay. globally. You, I don't know, have you heard the term Nigeria no the carry last? What? So, what is that? Okay. So, <laughs> so there's a term, yeah. or there's a phrase that is used very regularly. Yeah. Naija, no de carry last. No de carry last. Yeah. 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 So what it, it, it means is Nigerians don't come in the last position. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, <laughs> yes. So what, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's, so in, in everything that we venture into yeah we try to make the best out of it oh yeah in fact yes. there's also a saying that if you go to anywhere in the world mm -hmm. and you don't find an nigerian there then run yeah you know so yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well then run from norway because <laughs> no, well, no, no, i no, actually no. met a nigerian I, here yeah, who know, lives in norway but that's the phrase yeah. but it, it's a good thing have you tried the nigerian jollof Jello fries? Yeah. Yes, but it's oh. so it's so spicy, you know. But like the guys <laughs> from, from my band uh, who I played with there, some fantastic musicians. Okay. They, they they were going out to eat, and they're like, no, no, no. We need we need strong food. Mm. No, but but the strong food here or the mild food, mild here, food. <laughs> for you is like uh, like I'm suff suffocating almost. But I I love the taste of it and that that spice you could say oh, that's yeah. in the music you know mm -hmm. Ooh, that that vitality and that spice it's maybe too much for us Europeans to express. So your uh, tummy sick. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. but in, yeah. but if you <laughs> if you connect it to to art, for example, the the stage. Oh, yeah, the stage yeah, presence yeah, of yeah. of uh, many Nigerians yeah. is like explosive, I very spicy. So, I like I said, I try to add five percent of that into my <laughs> stage presence, and then then as a Norwegian uh, white stiff European, mm -hmm. you know, if you have just five percent more expressiveness, it feels like. Thousand percent more. Thousand percent. Yes, exactly. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. true. That's true. So I steal a little, little of that from Nigeria. I hope <laughs> to bring back your life. You, you, you should. You should try on a little more spices. I mean, um, I don't know if you've been to other parts like India and the rest that have a lot more spices than Nigeria yeah. draws, yeah. but but still, yeah, Nigerian spices. I would recommend to anybody yeah. in any part of the world.
you have to write me a list afterwards and then right. I will buy a ton on my way. I will do that. Perhaps I will yeah. even take you around as well. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I will awesome. do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and apart from that, so let's get back to the music. Yeah. Um, what do you think about Nigerian music generally? Because we have so many genres as mm. well. Yeah. Not just yeah. jazz, not just. And one of the things that has um, kept us going is the fact that there's been an infusion of our um, our artists having to do different genres with other artists that are doing other genres yeah so it now becomes like oh there's a different sound every time yeah. so you have the pop artist doing something with the afro artist mm -hmm. or the reggae or the jazz yes. or the so so there's this or rap music you know yeah. so there's an infusion everywhere and so it gives it a different tune every time yeah yeah what what do you think about the general nigerian music because well, these days well, yeah. sorry before before you speak these days afro is not just afro there's there are so many dimensions to afro now yeah. so there's afro pop afro hip afro so many things yeah so what what is your impression of the general nigerian music well, like you said, it's it's so broad uh, and uh, it's rich. It's multidimensional. It people are like uh, high life uh, mixed mm, with right. uh, Igbo. You know, you know, it's, mm. it's like p people are uh, are uh, borrowing from each other and uh, coming together and uh, and uh, especially in the jazz scene, I noticed that a lot uh, of uh, the m music comes from high life, for example, right. and comes from church music and right. uh, like the the um, church. I, uh, last time I was in Nigeria, I went to a church. Oh right! And believe me, being a church in church in Nigeria, it's not the same as in Norway. <laughs> I, I come from a priest family, meaning that I have like you already uh, have an orientation. I have like seven priests in my family on my Whoa. father's side. My father and mother is not priests, but uncles and aunts and cousins, and and they are. Uh, I bless them. I love them. But when they have, they preach or the Norwegian style is very like. Yes, now uh, yeah, the, the very monotone. It, yeah, it's the very style orthodox. of the, yeah, yeah. It's the Protest, Protestant. Yeah, it's, it's Protestant. It's very monotone, yeah. Yeah. and it's like uh, you're just. Um, no, I shall not say it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, let's. Uh, but when I came to this yeah, church in yeah. uh, Nigeria. First of all, it was like a thousand people there. It was lead screens. It was yeah. a twenty-five piece band. It it was like heaven opened itself. Uh, like right. I, I was crying. Then the pastor <laughs> came out. He and and he started. I, he was speaking uh, some a little in pigeon as well. Okay. And uh, suddenly everyone starts to laugh. Yeah. It was like a com yeah. com comic performance. Comic, and yeah. then suddenly everyone just became in a trance. Like everyone mm. hold hands and just just started to like really experience god and then uh, like connect pray prayers deep prayers right. personal prayers and then the band came on stage again like the, uh, i seen some gospel things in the us but I it like cannot to out which this is after the interview yeah it, it the, cannot yeah, compare yeah. to yeah. this because <laughs> This was like, this is what I think, uh, if you're gonna be Christian and you're gonna practice yeah. religion, this mm. is the way you should do it. Mm. Connect, uh, don't have yeah. this, all these it's barriers in between. Yeah. Engage it, true music right. by the way. Right. So I think that uh, um, music, I feel like music here comes from a place. It comes from a purpose. It's not just uh, some people, oh, let's jam. Like I feel mm, everyone here just, has a very deep core. Deep yeah, at least yeah. Or, or everyone I spoke with them, and, uh, and they're fantastic musicians. Like there, there's so many great musicians here and so many great artists, which if you drop them in Europe or you drop them in Norway, they will be like big stars there. But here it's like er everywhere. Mm. Uh, like yesterday I was playing at the event called the Elytron yeah. and uh, they, they have a concert series and it was I think it was like six uh, artists and all of them I, my jaw just dropped and same at the uh, Aburja International yeah, Jazz uh, Afro Jazz Festival which yeah. I was yeah. honored yeah. to be the international headliner this year the artists I saw there and the musicians I, I, I was mind blown uh, maybe I had just been lucky to uh -huh. meet the best of the best but uh, 
it's so high quality, yeah. it's so diverse in its richness, but it still has uh, it in the broader scope. It has the the um, I don't know if it's the right word, but the Afro signature. Feel, in a way. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's that's the thing. Um, it brings me to something that has been really troubling for me, um, which is the fact that in Africa we have lost. I think this is my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, we are losing, rather, perhaps I should use the word, the term. We are losing the essence of our ability to stay to our um, origins of musicality. Mm -hmm or cultures um it, like you know we used to have the storytelling culture mm. in africa yeah where um older folks would bring um, young kids together and tell them stories mm. from the time before uh, they were born and you know also um, tales that would uh, like help them understand humanity, yeah. Yeah. you know, and the essence for living and all of those kinds of mm. things. Life lessons, uh, life almost, lessons, yeah? Yeah. yeah. And and it transcended from storytelling to poetry to to music. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 So yeah. so, but now, in fact, our largest um, television. Um, state-owned television mm -hmm. used to have a program called Tales by Moonlight yeah. way back in the day where kids would sit by a bonfire yeah. and then stories would be told wow. you know about you know the cultures the tales like really important lessons to be learned in fact when the stories are told after they are told they will ask the children questions like what did you learn from mm. this story you know, but we don't have that anymore. And same goes with poetry and same goes with, with, with music. So these days what we, we, we have, uh, what we have are uh, clubs where you go to just dance and get high and perhaps you're not even listening to the lyrics of the songs that you're being sung. Yeah. But we don't have those original live band music playing places anymore. Mm that you can actually point to and say i'm going to this place to because to this kind of music yeah mm. you know back in the day like you mentioned earlier on we had the fellas yeah you know who had shrine. yeah the shrine. i mean the yeah. shrine is still it, existing it's still but, there, but, but it's, it's uh, not as popular yeah. and we should make those kind of places popular yes. yeah we used to have the bongo sequi who had a place in benue mm -hmm. you know yeah. which was a live band as yeah. well and it was quite popular and he was playing you know live music and quite interesting yeah. places yeah. we used to have um i mean the, the, a lot of them mm. you know way back then and um right now we don't mm. we are losing the essence of what the folk music and in fact what music generally is yeah yeah i i think also that uh, that is a problem in Norway too. Uh, I have okay. to say, but it's it's different because, like we, to we talked about a mm -hmm. little bit about it off camera, that in Norway we have, uh, and particularly Oslo, we have like one scene for uh, which program a lot of world music can be nice. people from Nigeria even coming and performing uh, in in your costumes in your right. um, traditional music, but. Uh, um, but for this particular stage in particular, we have like jazz clubs, uh, which I uh, understood even in Lagos, it's almost mm. no jazz clubs, even if it's a lot of jazz events, it's um, not a lot of dedicated clubs to mm. to music. But in the 70s, we had the, um, and the 80s, and uh, we had a legendary place in Norway called uh, Club 7. Cool. Where like uh, Miles Davis performed there, a lot of legends performed there, and it it wasn't just a club; it was a hangout place where you went wow. to hang out. You, it was the cutting edge mo modern art in many different genres, performance art as well, which happened there. People hang out, uh, kind of like the in the hippie time, you know. Right. And uh, and um, th it was a community, not only a venue which had 
yeah, programmers. Uh, yeah. And I miss that in Norway too, because it has become institutionalized. And back to what you said earlier, I think the foundation of most art is people sitting around the bonfire and telling stories. And then you have some music, yeah, you, you have yeah. some life lessons uh, right. from the elderly. And yeah. it was the same in Norway. Wow. Back in the day, uh, the, probably in the Viking age, people were sitting around bonfire telling stories. And uh, I see that as a foundation of theater, foundation of dance foundation art. of yeah. art in, in general yeah. it's it's about uh, storytelling we are drawn to great stories and particularly these communities of you know that if you if you go to this place you can just hang out and mm -hmm. just by being there mm -hmm. some some crazy art thing will happen you know <laughs> That, that I miss, and that would be the modern day uh, bonfire where you <laughs> right, go to right. hear the stories <laughs> and you know. So, so uh, it's uh, like uh, I said, we have the institutions in Norway, but I feel it's a little too institutionalized. And um, so that all, all respect to well. the Norwegian uh, scene that they have venues for people to perform very specific right. genres, but. Yeah. The, 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 pro, the cons is that uh, institutions um, stifle. Yes, institutions create you. norms the same yeah. way that uh, yeah. I, I have studied music. Yeah. I studied music in different countries and I went to this school and I was like, wait a minute, I live in Norway. Now I'm in Sweden. It's yeah. basically the, uh, by Nigerian standard, it will be like right. uh, the same country almost. Right. Right. The norms here is so different. Oh. The rules I learned, they don't apply mm. anymore. The, the, what's seen as important and uh, now becomes so abstract. yeah yeah so so institutions and educations in art does also create uh, a, a sort of artificial norms, uh, mm. which um, I think when you start to meet the audience. Again, back to the bonfire, <laughs> <laughs> like the, the direct experience. That's when you you really see what what, yeah. what is really communicating here, what's really mm. touching the heart. The heart. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I I miss that, and um, I have found it more here in Nigeria that mm. uh, people are interested about uh, the heart. Yeah, we are, we are, yeah. and and that, that brings me to my next point because now we are talking heart to heart. Yes. So, do you see yourself collaborating with um, Nigerian musicians, in, with our jazz musicians, mm -hmm. or other folklore musicians, pop, uh, you know, Afro? Do you see yourself collaborating anytime in the future? Definitely, and. Uh, I have already been so lucky to to oh. play with a lot of great musicians yeah. now. Like I had this amazing oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. band yeah. with um, Nigerian musicians, uh, and uh, there, there's a lot of uh, artists which I met who who want me to come back and work with them. And if it's in the more production side as a producer, yeah. or if it's a, mm. they want maybe my my yeah my mm. guitar on their album or whatever or or some other collaborations. I'm I'm going out broadly here. And uh, mm. another big project, which is not only music, but theater, is um, is uh, uh, the initial reason why I came to Nigeria was uh, Dr. Patrick Judote, the artistic director of Just Repertory Theater, which is yeah. the longest standing free independent theater company in Nigeria. They have a festival in Jos, and uh, we are doing a radio drama series where we translate a very famous uh, play into pidgin English, uh, a Norwegian play called um, um, called uh, the Master Builder. Norwegian or Nigerian? Uh, it, it's a Norwegian play okay. uh, by a, a okay. playwright Henrik Ibsen. He's like the second most famous playwright right. after Shakespeare, right. and he happens to be Norwegian. Right. So we have, have an Ibsen collaboration with the mm. Joss Repertory Theater, and that will be produced next year and will be sent on five radio stations in northern Nigeria. What exactly are you going to be doing? I, I'm going to do. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do the music and sound design, oh. and we're going to make it really uh, modern and um, and it's going to be broadcasted for nine million people 
Whoa. Yeah. So that's huge. Uh, that's that's yeah. really huge. Which will make it the biggest production of Ibsen in the world. Wow. Uh, in Nigeria. <laughs> wow. This is, this is really huge. Um, so, well, we are going to take a break again. And then when we come back, we'll be talking about more of what your music process is about, mm -hmm. um, both locally and globally. Stay tuned.